Welcome to Magical Books for Kids, a podcast sponsored by Magic Everywhere, INC, a company based in Florida, hosted by Michael John Sullivan. This is your place to hear the very best children's stories and an opportunity to get to know your favorite authors. Now, here is Michael John Sullivan. Welcome to Magical Books for Kids. I'm Michael John Sullivan, and thank you again for joining us for another free podcast. This podcast, Magical Books for Kids, is free on all platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, as well as our website, magiceverywhereinc.com. It is also sponsored by magiceverywhereinc.com, and this is updated every Wednesday at around 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We're delighted to have children's author Jennifer Decker. She lives in northern Utah with her family and two dogs. When she's not playing tea party or chasing after her three little girls, she's working on writing her next children's book. It's what she was meant to do all along. Jennifer Decker, thank you so much for joining us here on Magical Books for Kids. It's an honor to have you. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Michael. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. I feel a little nervous. (laughs) It's okay. This is a fun time. It's fun to talk about your book and everything like that. But first, let's talk about some of the things uh, early on in your childhood. First of all, was there a particular children's book that that you love? For me, I was always interested in sports, and and my parents finally gave up, and they started buying me sports books as opposed to the other books. But was there any particular book that you enjoyed growing up as a child yourself? Um, one favorite that I really loved was Sylvester and the Magic Pebble, and I've read it a lot. <laughs> I still have a copy of it, and I, I don't know, um, there's just something different about it, and I really enjoyed it, yeah. Were there any particular authors that inspired you as you, as you were growing up? For me, as I got older, it was Charles Dickens, because I loved the, A Christmas Carol, and I do love the time of Christmas, so that was probably the reason why I liked Charles Dickens so much. Uh, was there a particular childhood uh, author that you felt uh, kind of inspired you? Um, maybe Mark Twain. I, I grew up with all the classics. My father is very well read and he turned me on to books at a very young age. And I'd spend hours in his study and we'd talk books and read books together. And so, and I also, Charles Dickens is wonderful, um, but Mark Twain, there's something about Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn, and I've read those books a lot. <laughs> and it just, I love the old farm country, like just the old setting and everything that just takes you back. Well, Mark Twain was, is an excellent choice. I was thinking, geez, yeah, that's another famous author that I enjoyed as well growing up when we were in grade school and high school, though, we were, of course, asked to read the classics as well. So I hope that the kids today are, are doing that. Now, you mentioned you have three little girls that you have to chase after, and I'm sure that keeps you in good shape. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, having been a, a stay-at-home dad who worked uh, as well as uh, took care of uh, and shared a great deal of the responsibilities watching after two two girls, I can understand that particular part, whether it's going taking them to concerts or to the Chuck E. Cheese parties, you know, the soccer games and the soccer practices. Because those soccer practices on Long Island, they were like 30, 40 degrees and you freeze. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so I'm sure you've had many of those particular moments. Is there any particular books that you read to your, to your uh, children as well? Uh, for, us, for us, it was uh, if you give a mouse a cookie, if you give a peg a pancake, they love those books by Laura Numero. Were there, yeah. Are there any particular books that your kids uh, love? Oh, they... I know there's like recently there's my daughters are always checking things out at the library and so like there's creepy carrots they love monster books um anything funny there's this one oh oh it was something about lemmings I don't remember the title mm-hmm. that checked it out um three or four times now and it's hilarious laugh out loud and they just love one two three books at bedtime they each want to pick out a book all the time at bedtime and just anything that makes them laugh. And just and we love discovering new books all the time. Yeah, that was with some of the most precious memories I have uh, being a stay-at-home dad is at, at night reading to them. 
and them falling asleep to the books. Uh, there was another book called Basker. You know, about this little dog and everything. My kids used to laugh at it all the time. And that was a lot, a lot of fun. It sort of like inspired me also to start, okay, someday maybe I should write some children's books. And I started to do that later on in my life. I mean, I'm not an ancient man, but I'm, I'm a little bit older than you are. So let's talk about your book, uh, Oliver and uh, the Wish, and, uh, and the Wish, right? It's the uh, Oliver. Yes. And, and, and recently you were honored with that book. So let's talk about the honor you recently received regarding this particular book. Yeah, that was a surprise. <laughs> I It was yesterday morning after no sleep. Um, I woke up and suddenly I saw there was an email I had gotten. And I looked down and said, congratulations. And so it's like I opened it up and it was from, and it's like, the I won the Family Choice Award for 2021. And I was just really, I read it over a few times because I wasn't sure like if I, you know, maybe it was just a nomination or something different. And, but it was, it was a really wonderful feeling. I Yeah, sometimes, I, right. Sometimes I, when you see those emails, right, you think, is it really true? Yeah. Is this happening to me? You know, and, and we're talking about the book is Oliver and the Wishing Star. And it's been written by Jennifer Decker and she won Family Choice Award. And it's sort of like similar to a, a feeling I had many years ago. I was sitting in Disney World at this place, uh, eating lunch, and I got an email and it was from Simon and Schuster. And it said, We'd like to buy your first you buy your novel, Necessary Heartbreak. And I didn't believe it at first. <laughs> I read it three or four times. I was there at the table. And I remember my daughter asking me, what's wrong? I said, I think somebody's just trying to make play fun, play with me. You know, because I have friends like that. They'll do that. Some of my friends, they're kind of evil sometimes. But they will say, <laughs> and I thought that was untrue. So I had to research the person that was that sent me the email. And it was, it was somebody, it was Anthony Sigardi from Simon & Schuster. I said, I guess it's real, right? So sort of like the experience that you had, you have to read it over and over because <laughs> you don't believe this stuff is going to happen to you sometimes. Yeah. So let's talk about Oliver and the Wishing Star. What is it about? Uh, what was the idea behind it? But first of all, what was the inspiration? Was, that, was there any inspiration for it? Um, let me just read a short, short clip or a short trailer clip about the book. It says, have you ever wished upon a star? What did you wish for? Have you ever wished you were someone else, something else? Ever wish you were a dog? How about your kid? In this unforgettable story, Oliver, like most kids, doesn't care for chores and rules. Oh, believe me. There's no <laughs> kid who wants to do chores. Or wants to do rules, right? And he thinks his dog and all dogs have the easy life. They do, believe me. Dogs have an easy life. Okay. No homework. <laughs> No having to clean up toys, no having to eat broccoli, mm. no carrots, right? Eek. No responsibilities <laughs> whatsoever. And one evening, Oliver sees a falling star and makes a wish to become a dog. So why don't you tell us what happens then? Does he become a dog? No. He, he does. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's funny because we all, I think, you know, at one time or another, like, wish we were someone else or something else thinking that, oh, they've got it better, or it's so easy, and when I first started writing it, I um, I wrote it like 10 years ago. It was about 10 years ago. I I decided while working in a bookstore, <laughs> mm -hmm. at my friend's bookstore, I, I was volunteering all over the place, and I was headed, um, headed to become a psychologist. <laughs> I was working on my master's, and I was just it wasn't it wasn't anything compared to my love for books mm -hmm. and it's like although i love helping people i there is something it's like books i've always just they've had me and it's like my whole life i've just adored books and i was also um i was also teaching at that time preschool and the kids would just light up every time and it's like, I would read books. They love story times. They love like just circling around on the mat. And I just thought to myself, it would be so, and it's like, great. And it's like to be able to influence children in this way. What a gift. 
these writers, I never really felt it until I became a preschool teacher, is the way they just lit up and they would talk about things and just implement things that they've learned in those books. And I thought this is a powerful way to raise generations and influence them and teach them values and make them laugh and just, and I wanted to be a part of that. And one day I sat down at my kitchen table, I broke out a notebook and I, I wrote it, I think in an hour or something. And I was really happy with it. I sent it out to a few um, traditional publishers. I had studied the world around me about books and stuff. And they got just about a half a dozen rejection letters and life moved on. I found, I I got married, had kids. It got put on a shelf. Mm-hmm. And during the COVID thing, suddenly I, I was thinking about it again. And while I was going through boxes <laughs> and my husband said, you know, you should maybe now is the time while we're, while you're always at home and this and that. It's like, that's your dream, do it. And I picked it up. I had wonderful help from numerous people. I've just been blessed with an amazing illustrator and um, a great mentor who helped guide me through, and it's like publishing, Vicki Weber, um, Brooke Vitale, I got to meet and became my editor. Um, Emmy nominated Tia Perkin. It's like, I, I just couldn't, I felt so blessed to make the story suddenly come to life when I didn't think it was going to be a possibility. I, soon I'll be 50. And I, I didn't think that it was going to happen. And it's like suddenly all coming together. And it's really, it's really nice. It's really nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to realize that you're not unlike a lot of people. You know, when I wrote my first novel, I had written it back in 1983, 84, the winter, um, when I was riding the trains and I was homeless. And I wrote that and I put it aside, as you said, got married, got a job, kids, you know. And I finally, 20 years later, I decided, all right, this is the time to go after the novel and everything. But I could not find, I couldn't find that angle. It was going to be a memoir first, but then I said, Nobody cares about a memoir from me. I mean, you don't know me. Then, then three other million people have written memoirs. So I, so I had a dream this August night. It was back in, uh, it, was like, it was like 10 years ago, 10, 11 years ago. And I found myself in first century Jerusalem. I was time traveling. I said, there it is. I got, I got the story, I got the story. It took, me <laughs> 20, it took me 20 years to finally get to that point. For you, like you went... You had your life, you got married, you had kids, you had your other priorities at that that point. And then it looks like the pandemic, I guess, gave you, you know, an opportunity to think and to get this thing out there to the public. So congratulations, you took, you took good use of the time that many of us had. I think a lot of us authors did that as well. Yeah, I think it was a great, there's a lot of things that were challenging and hard and it's like with the COVID and everything, but I think, oh my gosh, I've heard so many amazing stories and there's been a lot of blessings and a lot of people just, the whole, the self-publishing um, arena also just opened up, it opened up so many doors for so many talented writers and illustrators and people in so many venues, so many areas. It's just, I was really excited about the time. It's like, there's always, there's always some good opportunities when there's chaos right <laughs> exactly yes and it's up to us as as authors you know but you know you have three little girls too you got to take care of and I'm sure that was very time consuming because as, as parents do know kids are not something like you can't bring them back not like a tv to bring them back they're there and they need your nurturing and they need your encouragement they didn't ask to be born into to this world so it's up it's our responsibility to make sure that their lives are taken care of first. They're, they're our first priority. So yeah. you, you did yeah, So you did a wonderful job with three, as well as getting your, your book. <laughs> yeah, well, it was named the Family Choice Award. That's pretty good. That's a great, that's a great honor. So, so it's, that's, yeah. that's something wonderful as well, something that you should celebrate. So, so this is, yeah, so this is Oliver and the Wishing Star. You know, and we, as we mentioned, one evening Oliver sees a falling star and makes a wish to become a dog. 
and that wish magically comes true, of course, because it is children's book and you have to use your imagination. At first he's on cloud nine, but soon things take a turn and soon he begins to miss his old life and his family. So sometimes we don't realize have what we have until it's gone. Oh, that's so true. After yeah. this past two years, right, with the virus. Oh yeah. <laughs> so so you took that at particular angle, which is great. And sometimes we think the grass is greener on the other side. We sure do. Sometimes it takes walking in another shoes or pause, as you did, to realize our life isn't as bad as we thought. So is there a particular part of the story that you love more than than the other where it actually brings the whole story to a nice conclusion and, and gives us that thought, okay, this is what the message is. And it's a very strong message. What would be that particular message you wanted to, people to come across? I know you mentioned some wonderful things here that, that not, to, to, not to take for granted the little things that we have today. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's any one particular part. I, I really, the story touches me because we always, I grew up with dogs. We always had animals. And I always thought that they had the easy life. And, but then when I really thought about, you know, how we covet other people's lives and things that like, I wanted the story to bring across, be grateful for who you are and what you have. And it's like, because you have so many blessings, your family, your sisters and brothers, all that, and who you are. It's like who God made you to be. And it's like, it's very special. And I just, I wanted every kid in the site to, to read that and feel and just be grateful for their families. And that was the big thing in the book. We are talking to children's author, Jennifer Decker. She lives with her family in Northern Utah and with her two dogs and three little girls. And we're talking about her wonderful book. And it's been honored with a Family Choice Award, Oliver and the Wishing Star. And of course, you can, can get it on Amazon. And I saw on Amazon, um, you have a hardcover available at $17.99, as well as the Kindle, $4.99. And the paperback is $11.99. So what was the thought behind, I'm seeing a lot more authors doing this now. And I just happened to have a chance to talk to uh, my publisher this past week. Anthony Zaccardi, and he was mentioning, this stunned me, okay, but, you know, he's on top of these books. He says that the ebooks are now the least that are being sold. It's uh, hardcover, paperback, that, that avenue is number one, and what he said surprisingly to me, and I don't know if you have any thoughts on doing this, is audiobooks. I but thought about it. Yeah, audiobooks are, are supposedly uh, coming right up behind the ebooks are now selling more than ebooks because people put them in their cars or they listen to them at home. And I think the pandemic did that for people, changed yeah. their habits a little bit where yeah. they listen. Podcasting became very big as well. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so what was the thought behind the hardcover? Uh, because I'm seeing a lot more now children's authors doing that. Uh, do they, are they finding that parents would rather have that option as opposed to a soft cover where a kid could tear it apart in some ways. Yeah, they could. My three-year-old all the time. <laughs> and uh, But um, I just thought it was just another option, you know, that I wanted to make available. I know for me, when the Kindle and all the ebook stuff came out, and I liked it, and the convenience to just be able to carry it around and so many books in one place and stuff, but it didn't replace just growing up and holding that book in my hands mm -hmm. and stuff. And of course, yeah, the hardcover is going to be more durable. It's going to last longer. It's a little prettier. <laughs> and right. um, yeah. Yeah, I I'm finding more often. I'm, I've been doing a little study myself because we have our book coming out. Uh, it's, it's out now, The Lizard Who Loves a Blizzard. And we're finding that more people are interested in buying the paperback as opposed to the Kindle or anything like that. Yeah. You know, and uh and I have my next novel coming out next March, and my publisher was saying, well, do you want to read your 450 pages of the novel? And I said, well, why don't you let a professional do that, you know, in that sense. Yeah. But I was surprised that the, auth the audio books are, are used. And I guess in some sense, that would make sense. Thank you. If a, if a parent is busy, 
you can stick the audio, you can have the audio book on an iPad or on a phone or anything. And yeah. a child can listen to it and see the pictures as well. So that that's another avenue, I think, for children's authors. And I've seen some other authors go into the audio book as well. So is that something you want to explore down the road? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When I was growing up, my mom, she, and it's like, she's, my mother is Korean and Japanese. And so she didn't speak perfect English. So mm -hmm. my father was the one who read a lot of stories and stuff. My mom would get the cassette tapes that had the books at the libraries for us. And we'd listen to those at bedtime. <laughs> and so I really, you know, it's like, I like the thought of that. And yes, now when I'm traveling a lot and I've traveled a lot, I like to throw in an audio and it's like, because we're so busy, we're always trying to accomplish so many things, especially as Americans. And it's like, you want to knock out one or two things at the same time. And sometimes it's hard to sneak in a book. I know for me, that's something I miss. I don't get to read as much with three little ones. And so if I throw in an audio and it's like, or I go to sleep with one, and that's like, it's nice. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. going to listen to it. Thank you, and congratulations Thank on your you. new book. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, too, as well as your books coming out. So now that you have Oliver and the Wishing Star, and now that it's oh, it's been given a great award and everything like that, any thoughts of writing the next book? And if so, what would that book, what, what kind of a book would you like to write? I am actually working on a book right now um, about a little monster. And okay. <laughs> is this a good and monster, a happy monster, you know, or is this a monster that likes to eat a lot or something like that? I'm finding all sorts of monsters out there. Yeah. Um, he's a monster that's different than other monsters. He's not your typical monster. He's just like little boys and girls now. It's like he's a little different. He looks a little different acts a little different and so he's kind of not the most popular monster and that's like amongst his peers and but there's something very special about him and I'll just leave it at that <laughs> okay now do you have a publication date in mind I know for authors today and I'm sure you know this and you have assembled really a very qualified team helping you so congratulations on that as well you. to have such a <laughs> yeah, to have, you have to have such a team with you on the first book is is tremendous because we all need help for sure, you know. And it's a tough for marketing promotion. We have to do a lot of marketing, a lot of promotion, especially when you're not with a big publisher. And I can tell you, I've had a book with a big publisher with Simon Schuster, and nice independent, <laughs> I, yeah, and, and, and independent publishers actually do a better job, in my point opinion, because with a you're with a publisher like Simon Schuster, you're like a small fish in a big pond. You know, and so you could get lost in there. But with an independent publisher, they pay a little bit more attention to you and to your marketing and promotional needs. So with that in mind and everything, uh, is there anything with this particular book? When it, when do you want to publish this book? And would you change anything? Knowing that you're going through the experience now, is there anything in particular that you would like to improve upon? Um, I've taken my time. Um because my priority is, is God, my, my family, and I love, I love writing and, I, and reaching other people in the world and making a positive, di positive difference. And, but I'm just such, I'm just, I feel like a little kid who's just humbly just sitting back and just kind of watching this mm -hmm. take place. Um, I'm in no rush to write and put out books. I just wanna take my time and really enjoy it like I have. And I feel so blessed that I've had such a great team, which I plan on working with everyone again. And, and me and Krish, we've talked about another book and, and it's like together and definitely done it. I always wanna, and it's like, I love Brooke and Tia, definitely plan to keep them on my team for life. <laughs> They're amazing, all of them. Um, Probably, I'm, it would be nice to have maybe out at the end of the, and it's like next year, and it's like, or maybe every other year, I'll put out a book. I'm not sure. I do enjoy the process, and I enjoy the relationships that I've gained and, and the new friends in my life. It's really nice. I, it's one of the nicest. The community of children book writers is one of the most beautiful groups and communities I've ever been a part of. I really love the personalities and characters out there. It's like a bunch of 
kids that never grew up and with hearts of gold, like, and you know, who, if you want to do a book for a kid, it's like, there's something special about you. And I'm so glad to just be a part of it. Part of it all. That's a great community and and people are very supportive. Most, most people are, especially in the children's author uh, community and everything. So, uh, and you got three kids. I mean, so it's not like it's, you got three young uh, girls that of course they look up to you and they need your guidance and they need, they need you in their lives as well. So you have that as well, part of it. And it goes very fast. I know you probably, people have said this to you. They said it to me. I didn't believe them, but here I am. You know, my girls now, our girls are 27 and 23. I mean, so it goes fast. It's like just the other day, I thought I was holding them in my arms, you know, or, or yeah. carrying the diaper bag around when I was like taking them <laughs> to their events and everything like that. So it goes, it goes very quick. So that's good. That's good. You, as I said, you've done you've done a smart thing. You assembled a good team as well. But we want to tell people where they can find this wonderful book, Oliver and the Wishing Star. It's on Amazon, of course. You can get the hardcover for seventeen ninety nine, the soft cover for eleven ninety nine, the Kindle for four ninety nine, and perhaps an audio book down the road for you. And of course, your website is Jennifer Decker dot org. Jennifer, yeah. and then D-E-C-K-E-R dot org. They can find you there as well as your wonderful work. So congratulations. First Thank book, you. Family Choice Award. What's yeah. The next, yeah, what are you going to do to top that, huh? That's a, a, little, a little bit of pressure there, right? I have to get that. Not very few people get a Family Choice Award just for your knowledge. But to get it on your first try, that's pretty amazing. So congratulations. Thank you so much. And it's been wonderful to have you, Jennifer Decker, here on Magical Books for Kids. You can hear this podcast in the future on Wednesdays or any other day when it is published. And it is published by magiceverywhereinc.com. And it's free on all platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, and our website, magiceverywhereinc.com. Jennifer Decker, thank you so much for joining us on Magical Books for Kids. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to Magical Books for Kids, a podcast sponsored by Magic Everywhere INC, a company based in Florida, hosted by Michael John Sullivan. This is your place to hear the very best children's stories and an opportunity to get to know your favorite authors. Join us for another fun storytelling podcast next week. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're almost in October, right? So it's like it's yes. going to be 2022 at this juncture. Yes. Uh, so no matter what. Get my... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no matter what you writing. do at this point, it's going to be 2022. It's because it, the year's yeah. gone so fast. Now, during the uh, one last question, during the pandemic, how did you? Uh, how did you uh, get through that particular part? Because as you said, we were all on computers. We either were either on our computers or we were watching Netflix or watching some kind of series or whatever. Children were home. The one thing I did find, and this is from a lot of people in the publishing business, is that children's books were red hot. Parents were buying children's books because A, their kids were home. That was one way to occupy them, a good way to occupy them. Uh, so how did you do during the pandemic with, with your children as well and your family? I think I'm, you know, I, I feel really fortunate um, to have a really supportive family. You know, my husband is, mm. you know, very hands-on. We work really well together as a team. Um, you know, we, we talk every day, uh, you know, and uh, about discuss, you know, what, what we need to do and, and how we're going to, you know, get through different tasks and, and, uh, you know, challenges that we might have. And, you know, I like to talk to my, to my boys about, um, you know, what's happening, um, you know, in age appropriate way, uh, better expectations of them and and make sure that we all have a balance um, because, you know, it's very easy. We both, my husband and I both work and, um, you know, we're both really busy and so it's really easy to just to get quite absorbed in that. So, you know, we try and make sure that we all get out, 
you know, exercise and have, um, you know, like to find that balance. And, you know, same with the kids and technology, whilst of course they're allowed to, to you know, watch TV and, and so on. Um, but, you know, it's got, they've got to mix it up with, you know, playing playing some sport and, you know, getting outside and, and uh, reading and, you know, other activities. We've played a lot of UNO um, since the start of uh, COVID. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I guess we all adjust in our own ways. What I liked is that you, you had a game plan that you communicated. Yeah. You made sure everybody knew what was going on. You communicated with your boys as well, which is wonderful. And I think if parents keep a consistent communication avenue open, I think that solves a lot of future problems. Uh, I yeah, think that's probably one of the most important things to get to, to, to discuss, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, something I heard recently is, you know, you just take it one day at a time. Like at the moment, there's, it's very hard to plan too far ahead. And I think it's just really important to, you know, take it a day at a time and, and, and carve out small um, and achievable, you know, goals. Let's get through this week, you know, let's, let's go for a walk. Um, and, yep. uh, you know, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll be out of it. Yeah, and people realize when we're talking about cybersecurity and everything like that and being cyber smart, you mentioned something. It's good to get outside. It's good to get exercise as well. So that's important too. That's probably as important as being uh, safety and everything like that. So, so the name of the book is How We Got Cyber Smart. And again, if you go to howwegotcybersmart.com, that's the uh, URL for the website. Uh, if you, I think if you Google that title, you could, your name is going to pop up right away. Lisa. And, <laughs> yeah, and Instagram, yeah. how we got at how we got cyber smart, Facebook, how we got at how we got cyber smart. So, um, so I think this is, could be a great. This could be a great series. And as I said, it's going to be evolving for sure. There will be another TikTok. You know, there's going to be maybe there'll be another Facebook. Who knows? You know, uh, I think comp I think competition is always good because then what it does is it's sort of like. It's, it's sort of like uh, somebody looking over their shoulders to make sure that they're doing the right things. Because a lot of times these companies are not doing the right things. They're doing it for the, in the name of money and page views and ad impressions and things like that. And, and that's not necessarily good for, for us as parents and for our kids and for their future generations. They're going to be our age someday, I tell my kids that they refuse to believe that <laughs> they don't think it, it's possible to be my age, but uh, it's going to happen to them as well and to their children. So this is a book I think that will will continue to evolve or the series. So congratulations on on approaching this because uh, it's important. This is a very important subject. So thank you for coming on for Magical Books for Kids. Thank you so much, Michael. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. And um, yeah, I look forward to chatting to you about my next book. <laughs> yes, yeah, so Ian, when your next book does come out, we, as I said, this is such an important subject that we need to upgrade, upgrade the conversation and the things that parents and children are facing because it's going to change and there are going to be more challenges and they're going to be deeper and tougher, in, in my opinion, because it's always been this way. So thank you so much and again for joining us for Magical Books for Kids. This podcast is sponsored by Magic Everywhere INC and our website. You can hear this particular podcast as well as the others free at magiceverywhereinc.com and join us again for another free edition. It is free on all platforms. This podcast and all of our podcasts are free on all platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Google Play, our website, as well as YouTube. Thank you again. I appreciate you being on. Thanks. And we'll talk to you again uh, next week right here on Magical Books for Kids podcast. Thank you for listening to Magical Books for Kids, a podcast sponsored by Magic Everywhere INC, a company based in Florida, hosted by Michael John Sullivan. This is your place to hear the very best children's stories and an opportunity to get to know your favorite authors. Join us for another fun storytelling podcast next week.